Hi, John here. Uh, today it's um, Thursday, the 20th of um, October 2016. Um, just uh, been on Facebook and uh, looking for information, a bit more information of what we're doing up Waitangi and also catching up with the news of the um, uh, elections in America. The debates I'm watching that very closely and that has a bearing on what happens in the world here in Britain and us with our flag issues coming up on the 28th of October Declaration of Independence Day that has a marked bearing on um, the Navy um, Britain I've written a letter to um, the Secretary of Defence um, name again. Um, anyway, I've, I've written a letter to him and um, waiting back on the New Zealand Navy, John Martin, and to attend the um, celebration, 182 year celebration. Um, so uh, we'll get around to that yet. I uh, hope to get a letter by next week or tomorrow, Friday, and um, that is very important for the Chief, Kingi Toto, I'm just about to ring him now. I'll remember the uh, Secretary of State's uh, name. I know George Zabellis, the Navy Rear Admiral, I'm writing to him shortly. Uh, and uh, let's see if we can get Kingy. Trying to get the internet up in Waitangi as well. Kingy. Kingy. John here. We're all ready to go up to Waitangi with uh, with everything. You heard back. You, you heard back from Sue. You have you heard from Sue. Sue, Sue Nakora. Yeah. Oh, uh, you alright? She going up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So long she doesn't. Yeah, so long as you don't spoil it for us. <laughs> um, no, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we're standing miles apart. <laughs> no, I'll just stick with I'll just stick I'll, I'll just stick with me and you and Jim. I'm just speaking to Jim Jim week or two this morning. He'll look after the the flag. Pole on the other Kiria and uh, Korora Reka, and and your one at Waitangi. So I'll just stick by that. I sent you a, a, a letter to the British Secretary of Defence. Uh, it should be in the mail to you, and and I sent it to Jim. Um, so all, hey, because he he plays around with the flag for years. And 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 been a, a he, he's been communicating with the navy to put the flag upside down. You see, um, uh, yeah. But he, I think he's he's got some sort of influence. Although it's your land and he's from down there, he's got more more in his head about what happens. You know, to talk properly to the flag than anybody else. He 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 can do that part in Maori and 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 do all that celebrate. I told him what. What to do? Just stay on that other flag, and leave the talking to the Waitangi Marae to you. Uh, you know, for the, for what we're going to do in that Marae is to claim the, the 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 land and everything belongs to the the chiefs, not not to the king. And so he knows that now, so so that he can proclaim it, and you proclaim in Maori. Um, that uh, as long as it's on the record, then that's all that matters. For the for the documents, right? I, I just flip out the documents uh, after the police case on Cook Street. It does matter with any piece of land now that the police have to stay out our road. 
while we get on with it, and, and we've got to tell the government what our intentions are so that they know they won't do anything until we tell them. Right? In your marae. Kingi. Hello? Yeah, yeah. So that's how, that's how it goes. So long as you know... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Those other fellows, uh, Hohepa, I'm not on side with Hohepa. We're, we're poles apart now, and I leave things to Willie. To Willie lets me know what they are up to, and, and they're not going to spoil it either. You just tell them to go to hell. Um, uh, so, hey, uh, tell me something. The, the, the um, uh, caravan park, I just wanted to go there for the free internet. That's that's behind the Waitangi Marae there, I mean the Titi Marae, and uh, with the camping ground. I'm going to go in there, and and use their use their internet so I can keep in touch uh, when I come up, when I go up. But the Marae will be open on on the 26th. Can I come there and stay on the 26th? Oh, it's open. Good. But that's all I wanted to know. Now, Kingy, I'm only looking after me, and what what I'm there for. For, to say uh, to the flag and that's it. Nothing, nothing. I'm gonna do the commercial side. I'm, I'm doing the commercial thing to get them hooked the money out of them, out of the crown, um, on your behalf for the Queen Victoria Trust and all those sort of other things that matter in that marae. But I'm just waiting back on on the the Navy guys, old John Harrison, and um, he's he's just waiting back on on. Uh, John Martin now to get clearance. They're going for it, but um, uh, I, I won't know that till he lets me know. Um, um, you know, that's for them to come and stand there by the flag and come inside the fire as well. So, so far, everything's going right with them. Uh, with the Navy, they've got the Kapahaka group that'll come there, as, as well as Maori, Maori, um, Maori Rapanas, they've got their Kapahaka group all set to go. And so, so long as they come to the flag and we'll put on a show there with them, okay? But I'll, I'll, yeah, oops. okay, bye. There, yeah, that's Kingy. Um, so he seems very busy. And as long as I, I keep telling him what's going to happen, uh, so that it turns out that way. That's all I want to know. Uh, I thought I I let him know um, up to date what where where we're at. So there's no panic at the last minute of, of things that are going to happen to make sure they do happen. It's a bit of organising, especially on the um, business side of things um, of um, what we what we're doing this for to make it public and um, make sure that um, we're talking to each other, not past each other. Uh, as far as um, um, everything else is, is, is in the political world, I'm watching more so um, what happens with the um, 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 proceedings in the U.S. Um, candidate for a president, that, that's, that's important. So that's, that's really what I want to uh, tell them, that uh, I'm organising things on the other side because really at this stage they don't go there. No one ever goes into the Waitangi Marae because that's government property. And um, they always have things at the Titi Marae. But um, he seems a bit busy or... Um, uh, having meetings up in Waitangi at the moment. So as long as we keep talking, that's all that matters. And um, yes, that's 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 all I, I rang for. Uh, but Fallon, Michael Fallon, that's I've see I've just remembered now the Secretary of Defence in Britain, Michael Fallon. I've written to him yesterday, so uh, he should have that. In the British uh, military and navy are obligated to talk to the chiefs here and it's not something that's forgotten 
it's still there. The contracts are still there between us and uh, and um, um, the British government and the British military. It's still there. These the, the flag is is a real um, document um, and title. Uh, the 1835 Declaration of Independence flag is real, and I'm hoping that um, um, the Marae and the chiefs up there, and soon the Kora if she does go up from Ngāti Pro, that they will talk to the flag and not too much about anything else inside that Marae, because if someone waffles on, and on and on and on about something, then it kills the purpose of proclamations that are made in there. She'll, she'll proclaim, proclaim that she has a government. Well, that has to be ready, ready with all its executive and everything. So that's her call. And so I'm proclaiming in English that the land belongs to the chiefs and not the king or the queen of England. And so our legacy is a contract with the king. That remains. That can't be changed unless we go to Westminster and change it. That's where me and Kingy are going. Um, so, so far, that is my intention, is to raise the flag to the top of the flagstaff on the treaty ground on his land and then go to England and raise it there to confirm this end with the Navy. And if this is a scenario, this is the worst case scenario. If the New Zealand government or the British government are ignorant of this event with this flag, I better put the flag on. Here's the flag flying. Okay, just to make sure I'm talking to the flag there. Just let a bit of light go around. Just to set the scene with the flag, decoration flag. Here, yeah. it's all light. Never mind, that'll do. That's okay. And I've got the flag here, the Declaration of Independence flag that we're celebrating 182 years on the 28th of October 2016. So that's very important with us and Britain. It's a contract. At Kororareka, I'm just saying to Kingy again, I keep telling him that Jim Week or two will all look after the flag on Kororareka as the first ship landed um, um, under King William reign at the time and that's the first contract of the land instruments to say the king owns the land and had to have that instrument we're holding the titles, the British titles, had to have that instrument to say they had a right to occupy the land and settle on it from Britain, you see? So they had to have the piece of paper contract with the native chief. Okay, so we're going with that as being that's the first mortgage, okay, land to borrow money from the bank and with the natives no matter what, they sign documents of a contract. And so Jim Wikortu can speak from the um, Whakatohea, Marae Tuhoi that way, as a hapu, native, chief, uh, being from Tahitian origin with the Moai statue as Tahitian memorial. We're all the same as him and Kingi and his hapu up there. The hapus in this country 
have come together under this flag in 1835 on that day, Kingi's side of the flag on Waitangi Marae as the second mortgage land debtor instrument or credit or credit as from the king on his piece of land. Okay, so that's his piece of land. And in on the other side there's his ancestors at Kororareka as well. Um Rehia, Nati Rehia and Nati Rahi at Waitangi and Nati Kawa. So what I'm saying here is this is that we're all native at the end of the day with our surnames attached to the land as a contract with the king. So I'm there as a land commissioner, native land commissioner and sheriff to account for the revenue and the banknotes that go together with a commercial contract. Private. Private. Nobody's business. No one can inquire into this business with the chiefs and the King of England. You can't see any of those documents at all if you're not the recipient of the contract from Britain. Okay, I'm holding these documents of proof of claim to that land up there and this land in Auckland. Utu Tonga title, Manukau title in Auckland. Okay, so that's an Utu Ta title at the East Cape. The Uetaha title at the East Cape with its memorial. Memorials for everything. Memorial for land, title, instrument, legal instrument under a king's corporation. You need the memorials to the land. That is substance, fact, information from who the land was meant to be sold to the King of England. He didn't get it for nothing. He came here to bargain with the chiefs. They were already trading at that time. So the commerce of the flag is trading straight to Britain. Nobody's, nobody else's business is just between us and the king. The difference there with Kororareka is straight king to England. The other difference was Waitangi where Kingi handles that side of the contract is the fact that his ancestors came after King William the Fourth was King William the Fourth's niece, Victoria, Queen Victoria. That's the Australian titles that came here to Waitangi on his land. That's the second mortgage from Australia. First mortgage straight to Britain, second mortgage Australia. New Zealand, New South Wales government. So now he addresses that financial issue with the, the Queen Victoria Trust set up in 1848. I've got all the documents for that, all the instruments for that title. You've got the Ututonga title, that's the native land, and then you've got the Victoria, Queen Victoria Trust, that's the British connection through Australia, going around that way. Right? Ututonga straight to Britain, Kururareka straight to Britain with the King. Waitangi and the New South Wales, New Zealand government here is the New South Wales government in exile, is Queen Victoria around through Australia, then to Britain. You see the pathways are different, not the same, with the same flag using the same flag. King, uh, Kingy's king uh, is King Edward. King Edward, Edward came along and that's his bloodline to those titles. I'm talking about the commercial titles of contracts. Those are new contracts with the flag inside the 1840s. Treaty of Waitangi with Maori Iwi, 
So he's got to handle the Maori iwi and the Moai hapu. What I, why I say Moai, it's that's been missing. The Queen hid it in London, the Moai statue. She picked off East Island in 1868. Queen Victoria took the Moai to England. That was the memorial title that I'm going after. I'm going after that title because Kenny is Tahitian as much as I am. Me in Raiatea Island and East Island and Kingi Mōwhiti Island, Tahiti. So we have common uh, claim to Maui that the Queen is holding in England, that Lynn Brown um, here, the, the um, uh, Mayor of Auckland, is holding in the museum, Auckland Museum, the Maui statue, that's Kingi and I's memorial title memorializes the land, the Manna Whenua. And in Dunedin, the Moai with the crown on his head, the hat, is the other title to the South Island and this one in Auckland to North Island. Okay? You've got another Moai standing in Wellington, in Island Bay on the beach. That's one that Ellen Clark put there. Right? With with um, with um, the uh, Prime Minister of um, what's that island again where it came from and they made the deal and put it on the beach, the Maui statue ok um, I can't think of the name outside of East Island uh, that took over took over the um, East Island anyway so now Kingy looks after John Key's debtor, Levy debtor side, and I've already said to him that I didn't want John Key's government sacked, because Suna Koro is going to sack, well she already sacked the government. Whatever she does is under the Confederation of Chiefs, that's in the second mortgage. So it's Kingy's land and his say on that land with that marae on there. I'm talking about the Waitangi marae because I've set it up. I've set it up for him. And what I want to say in there and what I want him to talk for his own property, I, I don't have to tell him what to do or what to say. That's his call. He's the chief there, and I've asked him that Jim Wikotu is going to speak for Kororareka on the other side because he knows how the flag works. And because Kingy is King Edward and Victoria, he has to look after that. That's where all the money's gone, into that trust that Queen Elizabeth has hooked out of the world. Okay? That's that trust. I'm looking after the other one in Britain the partnership side. They're the more percentage of the claim, whereas here the hapu has got a small percentage. They didn't say how much or in the contract you get this percent, we get the rest. They more or less said you take what you get because they are the administrators. We are now the administrators. That's what I'm going in there to proclaim that we are the administrators traders, oh, I better write it down, and the land belongs to the chiefs and not to the King of England or the Queen of England. That's, I'm going to proclaim that. I'm doing that on this video now as <coughs> my statement, um, uh, fact, that I can speak for the King, William, and his descendant and inheritor. King Ernest Augustus V, who I want to put into Westminster uh, straight away when we get there, Kingy and I with the flag. Kingy will come there because he's going as the partner to the flag recipient of King William's reign as the commercial side. That's all it is, the commercial side, and Kingy connects 
the queen side over there through Victoria to King William. So he has a major part to say ahead of me there. I'm only there to balance the books in the accounts as creditor here, Native Land Commissioner on his behalf. Okay, he's still alive to make decisions because the contracts are on his land, nobody else's land. If it wasn't Ngāti Pro, the government would have gone there and did it, but they did the land titles there, all the Maori land titles there, but those are Australia. You see, you see the difference? Everything in the Maori government does is locks to John Key's government debtors, levy debtors to Australia. So she's got to go along that path. She can't go straight to Britain because she's not one of the chiefs and sisters. Man, man to man. Salic law in King William's reign and his contract to us forbids women to succeed to the throne. So that meant everything was man and common to us and the common law as keeps the land in the king's possession. The queen got rid of it all and sold it. That's the side she's got to go and collect all that up, information about who it was sold to and try to get all the money back. That way, through her married government, is going to the United Nations to ask them for a loan, or a loan that you don't have to pay back. I know all of that, because I've got it all here. I've got all the married government stuff here, at that time with Mohi Manukau and his confederation. The confederation is totally different to the Maori government. Totally different. There are different speaking ways of adjusting to this flag and how to interpret the flag. I'm interpreting the flag around the world where it's gone to and who was using it. And Prince Andrew was the ambassador in New York where, where they King William the fourth time set the uh, um, share market up in New York. So all of that commerce, Prince Andrew was running around doing the business for the king and the queen. Okay, the king's bench court and the king then the queen's bench court. So I'm here for the king's bench court inside that mud eye. It's not not been addressed that way. Before. So I'm making claims, legitimate claims, to who we are and how much power we can use with this flag, even above Obama. I'm making statements on Facebook. So you better take those as being true and correct. Uh, as if you've got anything better, then you can put it in front of us on Facebook. That's, that's our proof of claim that no one refutes yet, not even anywhere. So it stands as the truth. Uh, so um, today I'm just writing to Sir George Zambellis, uh, Rear Admiral, Chief of Navy uh, in Britain, uh, to invite uh, a representative from the British Navy to attend the celebrations at Waitangi, inside the Waitangi Marae and at the flag staff of the ship of Admiralty in King William's time. Our flag, this flag flies on the crossbar and the British flag opposite just shows you it is a contract, partnership, on that ship. And then the New Zealand flag up the top, the Union Jack, Australian, New South Wales government. So that one is coming down to the crossbar and this one going to the top. We have to state that. That's what I'm saying, Kingy. We have to make that bold statement in front of the government, right to their face. If they're not there on the day, then we make the ruling as unrebutted uh, fact that we can seize the ship and the land on that day. We are 
accounting and bringing up to speed, up to date today, from now on, their occupation of the land under this flag straight to King William when he and his agents, crown agents, proclaimed the land belongs to the king. Okay, in 1834 at Kororareka and 1835 again at Waitangi. So we are proclaiming that the land really belongs to us and that the king is not there to speak for the king. So I'm speaking for King William until I get to England with Kingy to nominate King Ernest Augustus, the rightful, legitimate heir to the throne, to put him into Westminster, to pick up from there to keep our contract going. The contract is still alive with King William IV and his descendants. Defaults back to his male bloodlines, title, because Queen Elizabeth has gone into the EU Parliament and conflicted our contract. She has uh, defaulted on our contract with her, and that's the part that I wanted Kingy to address, you see, because he still spends a lot of time with the hapu, the, with the iwi Maoris, not the hapu, with the iwi Maoris, more so with the government, and treaty claims. Right? So I've got to bring up to speed the chiefs to make sure that they understand where we're going to because there are a lot of younger people who are right up to commerce and stuck, can't move without the old people understanding where they want to go. I'm talking about the young Maori. Uh, people and Pakia who have mixed up in the blood of both that they still look at the Marae as being solving the problem or is the problem. This is the first time we're using the Waitangi Marae uh, as being legal for us to go inside to create legal documents of title that we had at the first place, in the first place, okay? So, uh, once again, to Kingy, um, um, I think he has digested everything I've been saying, but I can't forget that we're going in there for a reason. That's why I wanted him to not let anyone waffle on about things that have nothing to do with the flag and the king. That day inside that marae is between us and the British Navy and government and King William IV and his successor, King Ernest Augustus V, just to keep the books and the history in line with us man to man. Okay, man to man, native to white man, and his law. Okay, and don't forget, we're using the 1830 to 1837 Acts right back to the day when we were given those Acts to use. Okay, by default of the flag in King William for whatever we think and however we think we can run our business. We have business set up in England, Moai Powerhouse Group Limited Limited Company, to kick off the commerce there. And we also have the Moai King William Party, political party, to start when I go there, King, you'll come back, I stay there, to run the Moai Powerhouse Group Limited Company and the political party with Matt Taylor, our partner. He's our partner in Britain with his SOS Independent Party in Brighton. So that gives us a working relationship and with Jackie Littler Gordon in Scotland uh, and Aberdeenshire as being secretary to me there.
for our British connection on the commercial contract side. Okay, on the other political side, we have a contract with the flag straight into Westminster Parliament with nominating King Ernest Augustus V, King of Britain, UK, Hanover. So he is the legitimate monarch sovereign of Britain, UK, not England, Britain, UK. Okay, so that's valid, validated already, was always there by default, of his long line of continuity of monarch sovereignty to King William the Fourth, King William the Third, right back to William the Conqueror, and back to King Solomon. Okay, all the way through. Straight down, mail all the way through. And us with Tahitian, our Tahitian, Maui bloodline is mailed all the way through. Right from the Wanoa in Raiatea, Hapu, and the Wanoa, Hapu, to Raiatea, to East Island, Rapa Nui, to Mokonui, it's the same bloodline. Okay, so I'm carrying that bloodline to that Maui memorial in London, Queen Elizabeth Great Court is our title, Mana Whenua, right there. So between that memorial and King William the Fourth Memorial in Devon, England, Devon Port here, there, that's the other memorial. Two memorials, two flags, Maui's got his own flag with the pyramid, the obelisk, Africa, to us, bloodline, and with the Sun Ra, same Sun Ra, right? and the constellation stars, constellation stars, and our dark red cross to bring all the Maori people in the world together. That's every race in the 250 countries we're going with this flag. Okay, so that's to put it bluntly. And the eight-point star of this uh, crown on the top of the 8.7 wakas in the Pacific and the one waka ship that's landed on Kingi's land at Kororareka, the same crown of King William IV, and landed at Waitangi, on the Waitangi land. Okay? Two ships. Two ships came here from Australia and landed on behalf of the King. Long live the King. Okay, so you got that? That's what, really what I'm taking the time off the day off today from going to the gym and to the pool. To actually finish this all off today with contacting the ones I want to speak on the Marae. I'll let um, Sunakura be one of the speakers inside Waitangi Marae for her Maori government. I I'll give that to her because she's from where I come from, the East Coast. I'll give it to her, but it'll only be 10 minutes talk because I don't want it running over time and we run less of time on the flag. The sooner we get that proclamation done inside that marae, I don't want her to carry on, 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 on about proclamation. It's going to be short. I'm going to tell her that because I don't want her burning everyone's time up. Um, and that's easily done if you're going to rattle on for half an hour and before long everybody's falling asleep and the Navy's not too impressed by long speeches. Um, so they're there um, to witness, because they're going to speak too. So the, the less time that's spent on something we already know, don't have to go through it, so just make, make, make the proclamation small. I'll make my proclamation small, it'll be the same one as King is saying in Māori, um, conveying it in English as being people can hear what I'm saying online in this video, in, everything I'm writing about on statements that we will be saying the proclamations that the land belongs to the chiefs and not to John Key or Queen Elizabeth or Queen Victoria or King William or anybody else but the native here. Okay? The native and their settlers call it what you like. Anybody be, meaning New Zealanders who want to be in this side with the king and if you want to stay in the Queen, you get the death bill and a pound note on your head. Put it that way. That's my job. The Land Commissioner, 
in is the sheriff to click dues owed. Okay, dues owed from people who are milking the system for their own financial investment interests, like John Key. Okay, we're going to investigate him. His name is already in High Court in London, and anybody else we're going to take into the court here. And I'm hoping that we will be able to get a courtroom in Auckland, uh, hire a courtroom for the King's Bench Court. That'll come from Waitangi, that's the proclamation um, for the district court, is to get one of the courtrooms in any district in the country. Not, no, not, not a high court, the district courts. There's more district courts in the counties, right? The sheriff of the county. The sheriff of the county will be the most power, and he's more or less the registrar running the court. The judge is there to adjudicate, but the sheriff is the one that's got the checkbook and the debtor's instruments, okay? So that's my job, is registrar uh, or someone else acting in that capacity from this eight-point star flag. Um, now, uh, Daryl Payne in uh, um, California, uh, he's there, he's got a good handle on how this works in the courts, uh, so um, I'm consulting with him, he's, he's known me for quite a long time, as, as do others, and been following what I'm saying, um, as well as Matt Taylor in, in England, and um, Andy Littler Gordon, and Jackie in Scotland have been following me for many years, uh, so they're conversant in what law is this way and what we are, um, are intending to do, and so that will cover that. But the Waitangi Marae, I'll say it again, that we're waiting for the Navy in Britain to have a representative here, I'll ring the em British Embassy here and see if I can raise somebody uh, to alert them of our intentions to have someone come to the Marae to represent the British contract with us. We need a British Navy or British representative here to be at the Marae to witness the 182 years this flag has been flying here and not being used for its purpose of trade between us and England, nobody else, just us and Britain, UK, the remaining England and Wales. Okay, Scotland is going out to EU Parliament still, uh, although a lot of them want to stay with Britain. They didn't want to tear it apart, but um, Nicola Sturgeon, the first president First Prime Minister of Scotland thinks otherwise. She wants to join the thugs in EU Parliament, so be it. But we are going to fill the void of the Queen exit and abandoning ship with King Ernest Augustus before they decide to try and put William, Prince William and little George to take up that name William George. King George III, it's not his bloodline, it comes down that the father of King William IV, King Ernest Augustus I, and King George IV, that's the father of those three brothers to us, and Ernest Augustus V, the descendant bloodline direct, not William, or little baby George, they are Spanish, German, the other way, okay? So that's the difference, so I'll get that straight, but this, <clears throat> they have no right to the King William III in St. Patrick's Order Church in Dublin. I'm going to Dublin to make doubly sure that that history is put back inside Westminster Parliament where King William took it off King James Catholic. Okay, so the Catholics can hightail it out of Westminster and put the history back to the king and get order again, change back to its old self where the king keeps his land for his people and get the pirates out of the way. Ross Charles, the queen, 
and Obama and America, she owns, is going to blazes and they're getting caught. Now with Trump going in as president and Hillary Clinton falling apart with all her fraud and corruption with the FBI and the CIA that set up all the terrorism in the world, right? These are all these ones that the Queen is giving Obama consent to use this law over the people and destroy America and pull all their weapons to protect themselves and their land off them. And these thugs have come in and set themselves up as de facto landowners and sold it off to China and Russia. Right? This is, this is Obama, black man, for the Queen and the Pope selling and the Catholics selling off the lands, the American Indians have no say because you've got, now you've got the Saudis over there and Islam's telling them Sharia law. No, 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 no. Indian law. American Indian law is the owner of the land, not the Arabs, the Saudi white man dressed up as black man with veils over their head to hide themselves and their identity, you see? The dark veil and the little eyes like that is not a Moai image. Moai's got straight face, you can see everything. Right? It, it's not hidden. It's not all that hidden stuff's going. It's gonna go in the rubbish and Trump is only there to put the commercial spin over how he managed to dupe out the tax department, you see, they've set the laws up for themselves and their own financial investment interests. Moai's coming along with King William and flush the whole lot out. Flush the whole lot and give it back to the people. That's my role, is here for the people. And in New Zealand, I might talk like this, but Moai is not Maori as such, because the Maori word and the Iwi word is an invention of John Key's Crown Corporation, New South Wales government. Okay, not so much the British government, but the New South Wales government created all this illusion. Okay, so now they're up against Moai and the hidden history. They're up against Moai and the hidden history and the King's history. Hidden right away, and they can't even say where they got their real sovereignty from and their real declaration of independence of this country they got none they can't start a new declaration of they just at the whim decide to say oh here's a flag stick it up it meant nothing the football fern flag meant nothing to anybody but john key and his corporate business financial investment interests and hooked the public in because of the image online that a football shaped like an egg on East Island, they went to Cardiff and booted the ball up in the air and it came down as a meteorite. All this crap going into people's TVs, into their heads, thinking that that's the solution to the world. No, it was only for their own wealth. Now it's our turn to make wealth, starting from that Waitangi Marae. Now to the British um, uh, Navy, I'm hoping that you will come to the party because if you don't, our contract will default further into debtor levy instruments being served on anyone that's violated our contract. And with you tied, bound to the Crown, bound to the Crown, of that time, well, I'm saying this, 1837, that's our business. We haven't altered it. We haven't altered that contract in this flag as being our use of everything the king gave us. Everything. I'm interpreting the law for our own use, private. It's our business to say how we want to put it. So I'm applying all those acts of 1832 to 1837, King William IV, British government, Westminster, to that marae, inside that marae, on that 28th day of October 2016. We already did it for the 
other Kurareka ship in that marae on the 15th of April this year, 2016, declared all of that stuff on Treaty Waitangi Day, 1840 Treaty of Waitangi Day on the 4th, 5th and 6th of February of this year. I declared everything in front of the Tomata there in King and took it into that marae and passed it all. That's our business, how we do things. Okay, so that's really what I wanted to say. Other than um, uh, I've rang Kingi and um, um, Jim, a week or two. I have all the faith in the world with Jim because he's passionate about the flag. And those people from Whakato here uh, have been coming up to Waitangi all these years with me, being there. Um, and doing the same thing um, from year after year after year after year and I can vouch for him to speak as a native um, to that flag okay with um, um, Willie Peter I've only known him this year uh, and uh, I've never seen them or, or Hohepa Epiha with us in the Confederation with the flag for that long, length of time, right? Because Hohepa was living in Australia for a long time. All the time with Mohi Manikau and Delwi Hungi, Hare Uitatonga and uh, Bihari Kake, Richard Kake, Machi Tarawa, all those people, uh, I can name a few more, um, were at the meetings. Um, and um, I never, I can tell who 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 has been supporting the Confederation all these years. And all those documents have gone to the UN, gone to the World Court, and gone to the Vatican. The Vatican has got 20 of these flags that I sent with Mahi, Manukau. 20 flags went to Iru Manukau in the Malta and the um, St. John. St. John, order. 20 flags went there. I got all the videos on that. I got all the videos of Moi, all the titles right through to Ratana, down Ratana, and Waikato, um, um, up to Auckland, the heads, Auckland, um, Manukau heads, and up in Helensville, up to Pai here, across to Russell, up to Rafiri, and um, Rawini. All those places, I've got all those videos of Mohi Manukau because I spent six years running around all over the place with him to establish the Manukau Auckland title and Auckland, Auckland, British man Auckland, named Auckland, okay? The British man Auckland is that Auckland title, the Manukau Land Company, Scottish Real Estate Company contract, okay? So don't argue because you'll end up in court and get fired. Um, so with that, I, uh, I will continue, write a letter to George Zimbellis, Rear Admiral of the Navy, Britain. I've sent the letter to um, uh, Michael Fallon yesterday, the um, Secretary of Defence of uh, Britain, and I hope I get an answer back from him. If not, if I don't get an answer back from them, it just simply means they're ignoring things because the Westminster Parliament and the government, uh, Theresa May, doesn't understand all of this. They don't understand this at all. None of them understand who we are and, and what power we have in this land and capabilities of contracts and commercial trade. Okay, so once we, once we get through the 28th of October, then we're trading around the world straight away. The Moai tidal energy turbines will kick in in Britain and here, possibly Australia and America, um, uh, straight off because the contracts are already set up already and the business and the shareholding online uh, and the pound note. The King William IV pound note, uh, Patterson's pound note, 1694 Bank of England Act, King William III, uh, King William III, King William IV. Okay, all set to go. 
legal authority under this flag, on that marae, on this land, straight away. Get that? You got that? It's on the record. This video is on the record of that marae and everything we say in that marae. So there'll be, first of all, there'll be Kingi speaking, then there'll be uh, Jim week or two, then there'll be someone from the Whakamininga. If it's Willie, no, it will be Nuki Orich. Nuki Orich can talk because he's the one that's been pushing this issue for many years. And he'll be the only one left that can speak in the line that I'm going down. Um, apart from Bruce Gregory, he's died. So their age group, older than us, they had the first say. So him, I'm trying to find his number and ring him, Nuki, to get up and speak for Ngāpui, uh, from the Whakamininga side. The Whakamininga side, 1834 on the other side. Okay? The Confederation on this side, Waitangi, the Whakamininga on the other side, the eight tribes of Ngāpui. I've got all that history here from Mohi, Manaka, of the Whakamininga, and the eight tribes. Okay? Eight tribes of Ngāpui is very important on these contracts. Apart from all the other hapus and tribes through the country, this was where that contract was made. Alright? So, it, the, the West Coast one went down the South Island from New Plymouth. Plymouth to Plymouth, England. And here, Devon, there, Devon, to Devon over there. Auckland, Devon, Port, here, Mr. Auckland, Minister, straight to England. Alright? You get that? And the rest up north is Australia. Australia, title was seized by the British and reissued here in Auckland. Those are the titles I'm holding. That demolished all the titles up north and put them under this title here in Watton, um, in Manaka, Auckland. They shifted down here and shut down Kororareka where they had their first parliament there and brought it down to Auckland. That's when the Manukau title kicked in and seized everything. About 1868, that's when the Maui statue went to England. 1868, right there, Queen Victoria. Put the dead, then everything from Queen Victoria took off, and then we start getting these instruments floating around the place. I'm the instrument man to hook all that up for our native people here. And the native people in America. The, the Native Indian uh, tribes, the Dakota, this one's for you. This flag here will kick Obama out and Clinton, the whole damn lot of them, out. Once we get through this bit and Westminster, Westminster's going to get cleaned out too. And Theresa May, she's got a job, and UKIP, Nigel Farage, uh, this one's for you in Britain. We're your partners. Don't ignore us, because this flag will backfire on everybody there. All right? The native has a say in what happens in Britain, because we're attached to you, bound to the crown of that time period in contract. Anything to do with contract is our business. Anything to do with your laws and everything else is your business. But the contract remains with us, right through the world. This is a world flag with the eight points in the four corners of the earth, north, east, south, west. The Red Cross, the Vatican, and Malta, Templars, all that wrapped up in this Red Cross, but mainly King George I, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, and all the other kings with this flag, England, Red Cross. The law and the commerce is tied up in Westminster. And this eight point star of St. Patrick's order will seize back off the Pope and stick it right back into Westminster. I'm making this bold statement because that's King Ernest Augustus' fifth job, is to seize everything back to King William III 
and this eight-point star, which he took off King James and booted him out of Westminster. So now we make the correction of this contract that the Pope has usurped through the Queen giving him the consent to use our contract legal documents and legacy and sovereign powers of the king. She, Queen Elizabeth, had no real coronation. Okay, so that's been fraudulent all the way through from 1852 on, including Victoria reign with the Rothschild Bank of England, and their US dollar is fraudulent. The whole lot's fraudulent. Everything they touch is fraudulent under a queen. Okay, so that's all, really. I better get on with it and stop talking and um, continue with this mission. Thank you very much. We'll see you later. Time now, 11.50 a.m. I'm not going to the gym or the pool. I'm going to carry on going, putting things together. Bye for now.